One of the most biodiverse regions in Russia lies in the Far East, on a section of land between China and the Pacific Ocean. There, subarctic animals like wolves and caribou live with tigers and other species of the subtropics. Temperatures here in the area are far below zero as a matter of course. It was very almost a perfect habitat for the tiger. Until, well, people. The tigers who live there are often called Siberian tigers in the West, but their real name is the Amur tiger, Panthera tigris tigris. But it was also referred to as the Manchurian tiger, Korean tiger, and Usurian tiger, depending on where they were spotted. They hunt deer, moose, boar, and sometimes even bears. John Valent, author of The Tiger, described them in an interview with NPR. Imagine a creature that has the agility and appetite of the cat and the mass of an industrial refrigerator. The Amur tiger can weigh over 500 pounds and can be more than 10 feet long, nose to tail. The Amur tigers can jump as far as 25 feet forward, but vertically, they can jump over a basketball net. In the interview, Valent cites a famous tiger biologist who, when asked how high a tiger can jump, responded, As high as it needs to. Valent's book, The Tiger, is partially the story of Vladimir Markov, a poacher. A poacher who, in the winter of 1997, alongside his dog, stumbled upon the half-eaten kill of just such a tiger. It was a boar. Vladimir was freezing. He was without the proper protective gear, walking through the snow in rubber boots, likely not having eaten for over a day at this point, and just trying to get home. But with the boar right there, so freshly killed, he stopped and did something truly stupid. He stole from a tiger's kill. There's an adage that goes, if you see a tiger for one second, he's been watching you for an hour. Which is why Markov, a poacher, should have known that the tiger was just out of sight, waiting and watching. As the tiger made an appearance out from the camouflage of the woods, Markov took out his rifle and shot the tiger. But it takes more than a single bullet to take down a tiger, and it escaped into the brush of the forest. What Vladimir didn't expect was that the tiger, now armed with his scent, might be standing there, bloodied, waiting for him on his front porch when he got home. Welcome back to Respect the Cat, the podcast where we kind of do. Sweaty, it's no surprise that everyone celebrated your demise. And now, worms are eating your eyes. So don't you worry, rotten head, as you sleep in your sodden bed. It's time to respect. So it's a goodie, but it's a cat. <laughs> okay, I'm into this. This is interesting. And he's not really a goodie. <laughs> I want to hear about this fucking cat. Respect the cat. Feline edition. <laughs> I love it. Feline this is the edition. first non-human, it's right? Perfect. I think so. I think so. I mean, we did stand a uh, Josephine's cat, but that was that a wasn't her I was episode, like, though. I was gonna be like, she's a person, mm-hmm. Mandy. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, I just mean, yeah, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Welcome back to Respect the Dead. I'm Kaylin Conrad. I'm Ailey Mandy. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you sure are. <laughs> and I'm Hoots. <laughs> so what do we think? What do we got so far? What do we... I'm so excited. I need you to shut up for the intro. <laughs> I thought you were doing a setup for like Siegfried and Roy or something, but I'm <laughs> so excited to know that we're hearing about a cat. <laughs> Me too. I, I love this. We're cat yeah. people here. We are we are all cat people. My my cat is one of my cats is currently in my closet right now, sleeping because he loves the new walk-in closet at my new place. And yeah, we we all are very attached to our cats. So <laughs> We yeah, are definitely we are, team cat here. <laughs> we are all cat freaks, which is why this is sort of a goody episode. Yeah. Not, I mean. I mean, all cats are assholes, but. <laughs> I can't imagine a cat would ever do anything wrong. <laughs> I mean, and if it did, then it must have been justified. Right. Justified. Yeah. In yeah. defense, your honor. 
it's a cat and cats are never wrong. <laughs> yeah. So we're sort of talking about Markov, who is very dead. <laughs> and we're mostly talking about the cat. So there is like a person here, but it's not about him. So after being shot, the injured animal nursed her wounds briefly and then immediately like hit the trail they they had people who study wildlife like coming in and looking at the tracks and how everything went about and did like mm -hmm. their little animal csi thing where they figured out what had happened so the tiger following his scent traces it back to the guy's cabin markov's cabin and then breaks inside <laughs> Like picks the lock like, literally into his cabin, <laughs> and he must have he must have been like the size of the cabin. Oh yeah, he's just sitting there with like a like a Jimmy, <laughs> <just> like, <laughs> little tiger Jimmy. So he busted yeah. down the door. Yeah, he like, kicked down the door. Yeah, I, I cannot. <laughs> it's like, or she kicked down the door. It's definitely a him. I may I may have said she earlier, but that was in the gay way, not in the like <laughs> a, a, adult human oh. tiger way. <laughs> So, the, <laughs> so she kicked down the door. And yeah, she and was nobody like, Surprise, was surprised. Like, this happens to her a lot, by the way. <laughs> I don't think he understood the concept of not being home. <laughs> He's like, what? but this place reeks of you. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like yeah, because I, I have a house. <laughs> the thing about tigers that I don't think people understand is that, like, not only are they they have the teeth, they have the claws, but one tiger paw batting you on the side of the head could just break your neck. Oh, like yeah. the, the yeah. tensile They're, like strength yeah. that they have being like pure muscle is like, mm. is bonkers. <laughs> like what they getting into like some shitty fucking cabin in Russia where like the doors made out of like bark <laughs> is like not going to yeah. be a problem. Right. Like he Kool Aid manned his way in there. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Take this, Tony the Tiger, you bitch. <laughs> so the tiger breaks inside and tears Good. everything apart, <laughs> pisses on shit. That's like just, petty. just That's fucking just destroys. Petty. <laughs> Didn't even the have place. to go. Just just peed on stuff. I get yeah. it. I get it. No, it's petty. <laughs> That's why I also was like, this is. When I say a goody episode, I mean we're yeah. going to stan. <laughs> like not actually like good. Like if I show up at your house way. to kill you and you're not there, like the oh. second best thing is pissing all over your oh shit. Oh my god, I would be so <laughs> mad. I mean, yeah, now that you say it like that. The tiger then grabs his mattress and pulls it out of the house <laughs> onto the snowy, like, front lawn area and tears it apart <laughs> and then lays down in the, like, ruins of his mattress. Okay, Carrie and... Underwood. Let's <laughs> <laughs> pull my claws into the sack. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And waits there for him for like 12 <clears throat> to 24 hours. <laughs> okay, this is petty. <laughs> yeah, I no, love this tiger. I love this tiger. Garage. Where's the movie? Where's the movie? I want to see it. It's got to be full on the of the tiger. <laughs> He's like, I got time. I'm a tiger. I don't got to yeah. be anywhere. And I was literally, literally just shot. He shot yeah. him in like the like flank of one of his legs. So he is walking oh, okay. more slowly, but he's still like he didn't yeah. shoot him in like the head or whatever. Like he's not yeah. and he's not like bleeding out. He didn't hit any right, organs. It's obviously not fatal because yeah. Yeah, that's all this time he can hang out. So when Markov does reach the end of the trail and like come out into the clearing where his house is, he did not have a chance to even like step foot in it and likely before he saw it coming the injured tiger was upon him in valence book the tiger the other main character is yuri trush he's the head of the local squad of an anti-poaching unit known as inspection tiger 
an organization created by the Russian government to combat the black market trafficking of tigers and tiger parts. Okay. So like people were going there, they were hunting tigers and they were selling the parts, a lot of which went to China. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I already like the anti-poacher because I don't yeah. really like poachers. It's such a cute little vibe. Like, imagine that's your yeah. job. Just like go mm -hmm. fuck with poachers. Like, dope Saving as Saving the tigers. Yes. Yeah. That is cool. That's based. Right? Yeah. Like, based in Meow Pills. <laughs> so, Trush was a guy well-suited to work in tiger country, Valent says. He was physically imposing and a skilled fighter. And Trush was a larger-than-life figure. A he came across as a real warrior. Mm -hmm. He's a big cat guy. Yeah. Actually, Yuri Trush, there's got to be a photo. There's got to be a photo. I was just like imagining him. But, oh, yeah, this is pretty much exactly what I pictured. I gotcha. Send you, rat. I am on the edge of my seat. Okay. <laughs> Aww, okay. he's cute. Yeah, he's a, he's a big guy yeah. in a Russian hat. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like someone's dad. Yeah, I would definitely watch the Netflix series about him. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Me too. And this is a Siberian tiger. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know what they I look, look like, so but nice. I know you're going to want to see a cat picture They're anyways. So yeah. Oh, big kitty. Baby. Baby. Oh. Can you imagine getting to pet one of those? I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> i'm actually like super fucking chill they they are like very friendly as babies but i still oh yeah i mean it's a wild animal i'm not saying you should this actually is, go out and <laughs> this is what the cubs look like the idea of getting to like run your hands on one oh they're so nice that last one is what the cubs look like stuff. Ew, baby <laughs> yeah actually um you know those like super sketchy traveling like little fair things where you can like hold a baby lion or things they, they, i don't think they exist yeah. as much anymore but they were kind of big in the 90s uh there was one that used to come around in central maine of all places and i actually did get to hold a, a baby lion cub a couple Aww. of times i feel bad about it now now they know better but it was kind of fun <laughs> not bad enough to call it fun yeah. welcome back to respect <laughs> the I, was a kid. <laughs> I, I didn't bring myself there my mom did so she's the one you should all be blaming and i am good <laughs> most of trush's tenure with inspection tiger he was setting up sting operations and catching poachers but after markov's death which is followed later by the death of a second man meant that trush ended up having to hunt down the animals he was hired to oh, protect no. did the tiger get a taste for human mm. blood was it like this is fun i want to kill again <laughs> basically yeah <laughs> oh <laughs> it was like that was great <laughs> okay I don't want to be weird, but what guys, a new game. Like, that was pretty cool, right? <laughs> I did this thing on the weekend where I like dragged a mattress outside, ate a hole in it, and then waited for a guy for 12 hours and then jumped <laughs> like out of here. You have to try it. Yeah. Darling, you have, you to, have to try it. It was oh. sim simply delicious. So, so it was a whole human, like a whole human man. That you, you ate after you ate the mattress? Interesting. Okay. <laughs> I would think you'd be full, but... Yeah. Does it matter the kind of mattress or... <laughs> it was no ND. Yeah. I can tell you that right now. She was no Casper. This is some yeah. Russian spring mattress. Mm. I bet. I wish if only that tiger had lived to be able to eat, like, to take a nice bite out of a Casper mattress. Oh uh, out of a purple. R.I.P. She would have loved Casper. R.I.P. Tiger, you would Not have sponsored. loved podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and now you're on one. Your favorite that we had just decided is true. <laughs> Trush had... Trush. It's such a hard... I keep wanting to say Trish and Trash. <laughs> Trasha. Trush had visited Markov's cabin once before he was killed. A year and a half earlier in the summer of 1996, Trush and Alexander Hamilton? Gorbukov. <laughs> okay. Gorboro. Gor. 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 No. Gor Gorby. Gor Gorby. Gorboryukov. Trush and Before Alexander Gorboryukov had been on a routine patrol when they found a dead badger cooling in a metal pot in a creek that flowed nearby. Cool. 
Markov was at home and Trush confronted him. Visibly nervous, he gave a story about how the badger had gotten into the pot. Killed by dogs, he'd said. Trush looked closely at Markov, then drew his knife and sliced open one of the badger's wounds. After probing for a moment with his fingers, he withdrew a shotgun mm -hmm. pellet. Markov had no choice but to own up to it because he had neither a hunting permit nor a gun license. Trush was in a position to put him out of business then and there, but instead he gave him a choice. Give up your weapon or get charged on multiple counts. My man's just wanted some badger soup. <laughs> yeah, so go buy some <laughs> down at the badgery. Like... <laughs> Badgery. <laughs> Go down to the supery and order some badger. <laughs> like <laughs> one badger, please. <laughs> one badger, please, my good Russian sir. I don't know what Russians sound like. Just like that, sweetie. <laughs> that, that's what they sound like. <laughs> Just like Perfect. That. <laughs> Markov balked at this until Goboryukov gestured towards his hunting knife, which at the time required an additional license, and was like, we can write you up for the knife too, bestie, or you can give us your gun and we'll leave. Markov told Trush he'd be back in a few minutes and disappeared into the forest to go grab the gun because they don't usually leave them in their cabins because of these inspections. Because like Inspection Tiger like comes around like banging on your door. Like, you go fucking get out here! <laughs> You got any dead tigers in there? <laughs> I can't even leave my bike chained outside in Los Angeles. And in Russia, they're just <laughs> leaving guns in the woods. Damn it. <laughs> and so when he was called to the cabin of Vladimir Markov, he knew where to go. Here's an excerpt from the tiger. The crude structure stood by itself on the high side of a gentle south-facing slope, surrounded by a thick forest of birch, pine, and alder. Ooh. It was a lonely spot, but a lovely one, and under different circumstances, Trush might have seen its appeal. Now there was no time. It was three o'clock in the afternoon, and the sun was already in the southwest, level with the treetops. Any warmth generated during this brief bright day was quickly dissipating, and the first sign of trouble was the crows. Carrion crows will follow a tiger the same way seagulls follow a fishing boat. Oh, no. By sticking with a proven winner, they conserve energy and shift the odds of getting fed from if to when. When Trush and his men climbed down, they heard the crow's raucous fetching concentrated just west of the entrance road. <laughs> I love this, this guy. Crows He's like are fetching. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's very wordy and i like it he is it's very poetic <laughs> trush noted the way their dark bodies swirled and flickered above the trees and even if he hadn't been warned ahead of time this would have told him all he needed to know something big was dead or dying and it was being guarded trush had a video camera with him and he was recording the scene in excruciating detail the camera doesn't waver as it pans across the pink and trampled snow, taking in the hind foot of a dog, a single glove, and then a bloodstained jacket cuff before halting at a patch of bare ground about a hundred yards into the forest. At this point, the audio picks up a sudden retching gasp. The temperature is 30 below zero, and yet here, the snow has been completely melted away. In the middle of this dark circle, presented like some kind of sacrificial offering, is a hand without an arm and a head without a face. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's like so metal. <laughs> it's so metal. <laughs> like, oh. Dude. <laughs> Nearby is a long bone, a femur probably, that has been gnawed to a bloodless white. Beyond this, the trail continues deeper into the woods. Trush follows it, squinting through his camera while his squad and Markov's friends trail closely behind. The only sounds are the icy creak of Trush's boots and the distant barking of his dog. Seven men have been stunned to silence. They arrive at another melted spot, this time a large oval. Here, amid the twigs and leaf litter, is all that remains of Vladimir Ilyich Markov. It looks at first like a heap of laundry until one sees the boots, 
luminous stubs of broken bone protruding from the tops. Oh my god. So fucked up. Bones sticking it's out so of his boots. <laughs> like, like a Halloween decoration. Yes, I was about to say, this is like yeah. a fucking cartoon where someone's like explodes. And it's just like the right, line is still just there. Yeah. You can see their feet. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I mean the moral Damn, of this, this tire was not fucking around. The moral of the story is don't like go get your own fucking boar. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah like my i almost said mind your boarsness and then start to mind stop myself <laughs> you sick fuck mind your <gasps> that's a t-shirt <laughs> uh, luminous stubs a broken bone protruding luminous. from the tops <laughs> my man's luminous those bones clean they're shining sparkling uh, <laughs> Let me just get that mirror off of here. <laughs> oh no! Uh, like when people <laughs> put a Twizzler inside a Coke, you like bite each oh. end, <laughs> each of the ends, and then use it as a straw. Just that right out. <laughs> <laughs> and also the tattered shirt with an arm still fitted to one of the sleeves, leading away are tracks clearly belonging to the tiger. And without approval, which he like doesn't have because he's supposed to be protecting tigers from being shot is like let's go kill this tiger <laughs> the tracks however the ones that they're supposed to be following were also terrifying like just in themselves so apparently the most reliable way to determine the size of a tiger without like the tiger being there the feet is by the paw prints like you can like you can like mm -hmm. actually tell the size based on the paws to some like yeah depending on like how big the paw yeah, is like, as and also how deep yeah. into the ground and then it there's is a pad yeah like the the pad at the bottom of the foot not the beans yeah but the like the yeah. pad at the bottom of a cat this part foot, like the heel mm -hmm. yeah in russian is called the piatka Oh, that's lovely. That's gorgeous. Yeah, right? Russian is such a pretty language. Beautiful name for a Piatka. cat. <laughs> oh my god, Piatka would be such a cute name for a cat. <gasps> right? Mm, Piatka. Mm, my next cat. <laughs> okay, so a large female Amura tiger will have a Piatka measurement of three and a half to four inches, while the males will start around there and on the highest upper end, usually about five. Okay. But like average is like four and a half six inches by the standards of like modern amours are is like the difference between like a human and a giant yeah mm. <laughs> this tiger's was 5.5 okay a so, tiger with a piatka that size could only be a male uh -huh. and would probably weigh in the neighborhood of five to seven hundred pounds Jesus. so we are looking for the lebron of tigers basically yes. yeah like like the rock yeah <laughs> bigger than any wild lion mm -hmm. oh, fuck. like he's eating a lot of boars yeah he Big was boy he was like yeah. i need that <laughs> have you seen how big i am <laughs> oh he must have been so hungry i know <laughs> Look how that metabolism you know how... i know my cat's like 18 pounds and needs to eat like 12 times a day <laughs> like <laughs> he's like the only way i can keep this swole is having like yeah, twenty thousand carbs a day <laughs> Oh Think my of god! How many calories, homeboy, was burning? Oh my god! Yeah, so many. Not him. Not him. Not this tiger starting his like tiger gains channel. Like, like <laughs> his newsletter is so tiger, good. It's, it's literally called Tiger Gains. Tiger Gains with a, with a Z on the end. With a Z, of course, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Tiger Gains. So they follow the tracks, but they don't find it that day. A few days after Markov's funeral, <laughs> what did they bury? <laughs> <laughs> the feet <laughs> and this little pieces all so put together they said that his coffin was mostly empty but Yikes. they had like everything gathered in like a pouch oh it's never pouch. good when they have to put pieces of you in a pouch oh, no. no oh that's really bad like all garbage die in such a way that they need to put me in a pouch please it's also <laughs> not the last Oof. pouch oh no that's going to be buried uh oh uh oh a few days after markov's funeral his friend andre pakepnia sounds right 
I believe you. Pachepnia. Which one sounds more Russian? Pachep or Pachep? Pachep, right? Pachep? Yeah, let's go with Maybe? Pachep. I don't know. His friend Andre Pachepnia arrived at his cabin about midday and before heading out to check his traps, made a fire and had some tea and bread. He believed himself to be alone, oh, yeah. but he wasn't. The tiger, though he was more than a mile away, somehow caught his scent. Or maybe he heard the slam of the cabin door or saw the smoke from the fire or like whatever it was. They found his tracks and then saw that he paused and went off directly in like a straight line towards the cabin. So this tiger. Because they're following his tracks. Yeah. And this tiger is like it. It. It almost sounds targeted. Like this tiger is like still taking out vengeance on the first guy. He's like, I'm going to kill yeah. you and all of your friends. Like this is not a, this is not mm -hmm. a tiger who is like, I, I now have a taste for human blood. I'm doing random. This tiger is like, oh, no, I'm going to fuck up your entire life. Yes. This is why <laughs> when I said. Nobody touches my boar. Nobody. I, this is like <laughs> ghost territory, like ghost story yeah. levels. Like, like yeah. this is it sounds like a. Uh, a campfire tale. Yeah, it sounds fake. You tell in the woods about a, a tiger in the woods that's like hunts down humans. <laughs> so a mile downstream from Andre's cabin, there's a crude shelter. The tiger crossed the river on the ice and broke into this structure, <laughs> inside of which was a mattress and other camping equipment. Mattresses, I love those. <laughs> belonging to a man named Sepilov. He does the same thing. He destroys everything that's in there and then hauls the mattress out of the shelter and drags it 50 yards across the frozen river. There on the opposite bank, he spread the mattress out under a spruce tree, lay down on it and waited. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. When Pachepnia <laughs> arrives, as the tiger somehow knows he would, what they think is that he was tracking their sense, but like understood that yeah. there's like a path. He's so smart. That they follow. Like he's like, he's going to leave, but then he always comes back. So I'm just going to wait comes here. Comes back this yeah. certain direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he oh, understood. That's, that's clever, clever boy. Just because he was gone didn't mean that he would be back. Like he didn't need to follow him. Just like he understood he could mm -hmm. go wait for him at his house. I know. He's so smart. Yeah, he's clever. His he's brain so was probably like... <laughs> 10 times bigger than ours like that that big old tiger head all that muscle powder he was chewing <laughs> to keep full it's also brain muscle not that delicious like russian whey powder right <laughs> when he arrives as the tiger somehow knew he would the tiger leaps and tears him apart his father oh, and a crew would find his body and return home with it days later. What they could take fit in a bag you could throw on your back. Yeah. So Trush and his search party have been looking for the tiger since Markov's death, tracking it, and are still on the trail. He was headed west, and when they saw where the tracks were going and how direct the tiger's line of travel was, one of them realized, oh, that's Sibenko's cabin and he loves cabins <laughs> and he's headed directly <laughs> for it just like we saw with the last cabin mm -hmm. so they're like okay some of us will go ahead some of us will continue on the trail but like they didn't their walkie talkies didn't work very far they had no way of communicating with each other because this was like the 90s mm -hmm. they didn't have like cute little cell phones yeah they weren't BBMing mm -hmm. like <laughs> they had they they just are out there sort of like winging it. And it's like it's the winter. It's yeah. scary out there. Like the, mm -hmm. the habitat itself is dangerous, yeah. let alone like negative 30 tracking a man eating tiger. <laughs> like, yeah. So the tiger did go to the cabin, tore it apart. And this time, mm -hmm. instead of dragging the bed out. Just like made itself home on it in the cabin waiting for him. Sort of like the best of both oh, yeah. worlds. <laughs> it's like, wait, why would why I would bring I it outside? outside when I can vibe it's inside? It's so warm in here. 
yeah i can just wait in here it's, it's really like super cozy. comfortable in here yeah. i won't get rained on or anything this is great <laughs> there's a description in the book where they compare like the eventual size of the tiger like after they've seen it to the size of the cabin and it would have been like it would not have fit cabin. on the bed <laughs> like <laughs> like <laughs> yeah it was just like it's yeah, it was barely fit in the cabin so they get to the cabin he's gone he clearly waited about like 10 hours and then for some reason peaced out so they follow his tracks out of the cabin until they reach a clearing which trush said like he got a vibe like they walked there and everything was just like really still and there was like a big open space they're all walking in like single file because that's the easiest way to walk through the snow because you're walking in each other's footsteps yeah right but that's also mm -hmm. you can't shoot like that if there's something in front of you yeah because you just be like blowing up the head of the person behind you or right. in front of you so out of nowhere one of them is just like guys spread out this is so scary as soon as they start spreading out the clearing explodes like the way that they talk about the tiger's roar they're oh, like you didn't God. hear it you like feel it like it's like reverberating oh in your body like like standing oh. next to a yeah. speaker at a concert. Yeah. Oh. Which is like so <laughs> fucking terrifying. I'm sorry. Right? But it like, is. I don't care if that tiger's killing people. Like, I am staying yeah. inside and I am putting something in front of the door, some sort of anti tiger device. Yeah, what I know can you put in front it. of the door? <laughs> he just like... bursts down the wall. <laughs> He's 700 <Yeah>. pounds. <laughs> Uh, okay you know what i'm leaving yeah. sacrifices for the tiger this tiger is smart enough for me to know that if i give it like one person a year it leaves me alone or something right? like you I'll keep feeding you people just leave me alone i'll hire apprentice i'll hire tourist apprentices and feed them to the tiger <laughs> oh this is very m night vibes <laughs> okay so while it's roaring is like all of this happens in like less than three seconds, but the roar comes and then out of nowhere, it's in the air, <gasps> launching directly towards Trush because he has a fucking bone to pick with him. Like he's <sighs> going like specifically for Trush. Can I just interrupt for a second to say? Yeah. Uh, I used to when I was a kid I got, I got really into those like animal attack videos like someone's like shaky hand, held head cam as like a, mm -hmm. a you know a, a cougar or something attacks them their dog or whatever there was this one that was going around for a while and you can still find it on YouTube I've seen it before of it's in India and it, you have a bunch of guys riding elephants in the tall grass and then out of nowhere a fucking tiger jumps out of the grass and it is one of the most terrifying things i've ever seen in my life because it's just normal grass and then the next thing you know there's a huge ass tiger jumping out and this is an indian tiger they don't even flatten indian... the grass that they're in i don't even understand how that works what like, like they're in the grass and they don't even like flatten it like right and I yeah i mean the, the, like, yeah, the grass it, is very tall it. but like they're on elephants so like with the elevation where they're at like they have a pretty clear view you of the, should be the, able to the area yeah. but like you can't see the tiger until literally it jumps out and it jumps on top of the elephant like it's it jumps <gasps> really high it's terrifying the way i wouldn't know what to do so i would just like slap it right like across the face <laughs> like no no hand me i'll have to find it and show you guys because like it is 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 fucking terrifying like that image is burned in my head of just nothing 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 <laughs> that's tiger. basically what happened to them <laughs> nothing 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 tiger yeah are siberian tigers bigger than indian tigers yeah i'm pretty sure they are i think just, indian tigers just specifically are because of the cold weather they need more like right right yeah. right more like fat and muscle i'm pretty sure um and also their winter coats make them like like seem like two times as big oh my too. God. it's like extra scary because they have like sort of like a lynx their winter coat is sort of like a lynx where all the hair is like poofing out mm -hmm. as like insulation so it's not even like sleek like you would normally see like a tiger's like no. summer coat it's like big thick. and puffy thick yeah so first the tigers nowhere then it's in the air in front of them oh and God. they all have to react in like seconds 
Valent says, what the tiger's fangs do to the flesh, its eyes do to the psyche. The tiger's eyes were fixed on Trush. He was the target, and as far as the tiger was concerned, he was as good as dead. Having launched from 10 yards away, the tiger was closing at the speed of flight, his roar rumbling through Trush's chest and skull like an avalanche. In spite of this, Trush managed to pull out his rifle to his shoulder, and the clearing disappeared along with the forest behind it. All that remained in his consciousness was the black wand of his gun barrel, at the end of which was a ravening blur of yellow eyes and gleaming teeth that were growing in size by the nanosecond. Trush squeezed the trigger, which seemed a futile gesture in the face of such ferocious intent, that barbed sledge of a paw raised now for the death blow. So in that time, two of his men fire 11 times between the two of them. Trush fires twice. It doesn't kill the tiger. Oh, my God. It hits Trush's right shoulder. It does, like, send him off because, like, he's not, like, perfectly aimed now that he has 13 bullets in him. But (laughs) the tiger hits Trush's right shoulder and his rifle was torn from his hands. Uh, Now disarmed with the tiger upon him, he throws his arms around the tiger, grabbing his fur and burying his face in the animal's chest to be like, you can't bite me. (laughs) Oh, that's really clever. Like a little kid that grabs onto your leg or something. Right. (laughs) Like if I if like my siblings and I, when we were younger, had jumped into my back and then I was trying to get at him. Oh, that's clever. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but after colliding with Trush, the tiger's momentum causes it to flip over him. And now the tiger lay in the snow, pawing blindly in its death rows. One of them fires a final shot into his head. The tiger was dead and Trush was alive. Well, that's good. Like, I, I did stand the tiger, but also, like, the tiger... It, it was a real, like, Frankenstein storyline, yeah. you know? Like, society yeah. made a monster out of the tiger. Yeah, and then the tiger ate, like, two people and a dog. The tiger had to be brought down. <laughs> so, like, yeah, because, I mean, it's only fair. hmm Like, he killed two people, somebody kills him. Yeah. Like, I get it. He was a poacher. He killed the poacher. That's chill. He didn't yeah. need to kill the dog. That was overkill. Yeah. Didn't need to kill the dog. Didn't need to go And then after he didn't need to hunt friend. down his friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like, at this point, it's very, like, am I going to side with a guy from I Know What You Did Last Summer? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, bad things happened to you, and some stupid kids were behind it. But, like, come on. So that's three quarters of the story I want to tell. This isn't the only time, but it's one of only two times that they know of that a tiger specifically with a vendetta tracked a group of people or a person down to attack just them. You might have heard of this one, but do you know about what happened at the San Francisco Zoo? No. This sounds vaguely familiar. In 2006. No? Mm-mm. Okay. So, okay, when you see a tiger attack like a deer or whatever in a no- nature documentary, it's like, it's gross. Yeah. And like, I don't like watching it. I always feel bad for the animal that dies, even if I know that it's like still kind of chill because like they all need to eat and like whatever. But like... <laughs> At some point, it's not because you're hungry. Like this, this buddy. Like, I'm sure that tiger was hungry. He was in Russia. Yeah. But a tiger at a zoo. Is doing it for fun. Does not <laughs> yeah. have that excuse. <laughs> they are well it's fed. For recreation. Especially like, yes, this is enrichment. <laughs> so, so in the summer of 2003, a tiger named Tatiana came into the world as a bright-eyed tiger cup. And this is at the Denver Zoo. And then she was sent over to the San Francisco Zoo so that she could uh, mate with this tiger that was there, but she had no interest. 
And she also had no history of violence or aggression up until she attacked one of her zookeepers in 2005. Didn't kill her, but ripped up her arm really oh, good through the fence. Like the zookeeper was like walking by the fence and she just like reached out and like ripped her arm through the fence, tore it apart. She had to have like Jesus. extensive reconstructive oh surgery and like learn how to like use it properly again. Very fucked up, but also it's a cat in a cage. Mm -hmm. I think about like uh, when I walk by like some of my old cats, how they like <laughs> try and like grab yeah. my leg or whatever. It's like that, but you have like eight chainsaws like yeah. tied to your paw. Like <laughs> <laughs> So it's like kind of her fault, but so not, not really. really. Yeah. Yeah. So a year after that, she's still in the zoo, <laughs> just vibing. Mm -hmm. A group of friends decide to taunt a tiger from across oh, the exhibit's don't moat. Do that. So like oh, eight, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Reports say the group was drunk and stoned when they visited the zoo. And when they approached Tatiana's exhibit, they got like mm. real brave. And one of the boys picks up a pine cone and like throws it at her in the enclosure. And then the rest of the boys do the same. And then they throw rocks and they're screaming and they're fuck? taunting her. And then they're throwing whatever else they can find laying around. Like the stuff they found in her enclosure after was like clearly. Where are the zookeepers? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like where's the guards? What the fuck? Yeah. Where's security? Kick and them out. Tantiana is like pacing back and forth. Super agitated. Yeah, getting aggravated. She's like, can you stop? Can you, can you, please? yeah. Sorry. Can you stop? Please, can, can you, can, <laughs> please. So you're, please. you're throwing okay. more, more, more things are coming yeah. now, and I don't think you're listening. <laughs> All right, I don't think you're listening. I think you can hear Caroline, me, Caroline. I'm sorry about your arm, <laughs> can but you, can, can you stop, stop them? <laughs> One, two, <laughs> two and a half. <laughs> Always two and a half. <laughs> so people near the exhibit begin to notice, obviously, what's happening. Oh my God. And another visitor of the zoo, Jennifer Miller, would later tell authorities that one of the teens refused to go along with his friend's abusive behavior. The teen, identified as 17-year-old Carlos Eduardo Souza Jr., would be the first to suffer the consequences oh, and the only that one sucks. to pay for something he didn't do with his life. Oh. Shortly after the boys had left the area, then Tatiana takes the opportunity she backs up, gauges her landing, uh, and leaps, clearing uh, the moat entirely before landing heavily on the cement. Oh, shit. Clearly, mm -hmm. the zookeepers thought this was not possible <laughs> because no tiger had done it, but no tiger had been motivated. Yeah. To. Right. Like, they had no reason like, to do it till then. Yeah, it was like that, that uh, quote from... The guy who was uh, studying tigers, he was like, how far can they jump? As like, far as they need to. As far as they fucking need to, baby. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Like, we've seen what cats do. It's in Yeah. It's like, it's insane how they can launch themselves. Up, like, even like straight up in the air. Yeah. yeah. Like, and you watch them doing math, like calculating. They're like, okay, they I need do. this they, much they more. Like, they yeah. waver <laughs> their, their like, little eyes yeah. doing the math yeah. meme yeah. thing. Like, Testing yeah. the wind direction. Yeah. And like, like, yeah. <laughs> honestly, if I had been one of those zookeepers and I saw her jump like that that day, my first reaction wouldn't have been terror. It would have been like, wow, good for her. And I then know, it would have been right? terror. Like it would have been. Then like, it would have been. Oh shit! No, she's on this side. We're in danger. And coming yeah. in in a close second. Terror. <laughs> close oh wow, that was amazing, Tatia. Oh shit, we're we're really <laughs> fucked. We're in trouble. So clearly, our bad with the moat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But really, what can you do other than put a <laughs> at this point, like a net yeah, over the entire moat. thing? <laughs> yeah. So, an inspection of her back paws during a necropsy, 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 an inspection of her back paws during a necropsy revealed that bits of concrete from where she landed had been embedded deeply in the pads. Oh God! Of her rear feet. Wait, 
Oof. So it is a necro. I've never heard that word before, but I'm going to assume it's the same thing as a biopsy, except you're already dead. Oh, great word. I'm going to stick that in my back pocket. Uh, <laughs> that's horrible. That like I'm that's I'm like, sad that she was in pain. That's how hard she landed. Yeah. Is like. <laughs> oh, <Owie>. yeah. <laughs> how many towns was she? Anna. Did you say how big of a cat? She was, was she? A, a female. So like three. Yeah. Three fifty. Yes. Right. Yeah. She's also a Siberian tiger. 350. Yeah. Still a big girl. I'm imagining that like when you were typing yeah, just yeah. then, you were like looking up yes. one of those like celebrity <laughs> sites. It's like Tatiana the Tiger. Husband <laughs> net worth. <laughs> Husband. <laughs> On wiki feet. It's just her paw. Visitors <laughs> near where the tiger landed panicked of course <laughs> picking Ooh. up their kids and being like ah <laughs> i wonder why <laughs> <laughs> she fucking did a superhero landing ran the concrete but she wasn't going for them was she no no <laughs> Full, she, she didn't they, give a shit about them everybody's scattering and she's just like sniffing mm. the ground she's where did they go like where now the where did these go? little fucks go I'm so impressed with how smart they are. Very like, smart. I knew that they I were know. smart, but I didn't know that they were this smart. This is amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, they're, they're very, very smart. This is why I said we were going to stam them. Like, I'm yeah. actually, like, I'm sorry, I, think it's, but... I also think it's, like, iconic that, like, crows, crows are, like, they're vultures. <laughs> it's so big. Because, like, crows right? are they're also, like, like, little like that. Friends. Crows are also super smart yeah. and hold crows grudges. Crows are super smart. Yes. Like, Crows will hold grudges for generations. They do. And mm. they'll make friends. And they also have funerals. Oh. Yeah. yeah. No, it's so cool. Yeah. I listened to an ology epi- <laughs> ologies episode about crow funerals. Oh, really? Yeah. It's. I want to be a weird crow lady. I love that, like, two, two species that are, like, petty bitches that hold grudges are, like, friends with each other. <laughs> <laughs> New mascots for the pod. They're just really little fist pumps, you know, like... As they pass each other, like, hey, boo. (laughs) So Tatiana heads off in the direction that the boys went, stalking them through the zoo and ignoring everyone else. (laughs) Our girl had a mission. Like, not even a glance. Like, she's laser focused. She's just heading directly toward. We've all seen a cat. Yeah. Like, like see something in the apartment and like get down really low and yeah. like start scuttling <laughs> towards it. Now imagine a like eight foot, 350 pound Siberian tiger doing that. I'd be like, oh, it's so cute. But also, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Also, she's not a murderer. Yeah. She's-, she's not a murderer. She's not gonna just like randomly kill some kids that are at the zoo. She is like specifically she is settling a score yeah she's got some specific people she wants to speak to (laughs) yes unfortunately the first one she came Mm -hmm. upon is carlos right that's the boy who had not joined in on the harassment like if you stand there and you don't say anything you are an enabler we don't know that he didn't say anything but we do know that he didn't like walk Mm -hmm. away from them and just like and I know what you did last summer. <laughs> you were there. Yeah. And yeah. you didn't you didn't help. You didn't go tell anyone. Mm-hmm. So I don't care yeah. if you were driving the car or throwing the rocks. You were enabling abuse and mm-hmm. and you have You're to suffer canceled. the consequences. <laughs> so the only possible bright side to what happened is that they said that Carlos would have bled out and died very quickly. Okay. Being attacked by a tiger is like no. not chill. <laughs> to put it mildly. I can imagine just like in- by being pounced on, period, is like getting hit by a truck. Like you'd probably be unconscious yeah. e- like even faster than like you'd be dead. I would hope so, especially for him. Yeah. He did he would I would imagine that he was unconscious because his injuries were blunt force injuries to his head and neck. He was punctured over and over and scratched all along his head, neck and chest. Jesus. Had skull and spinal fractures and his jugular vein sliced open. Yeah. Yeah. Like they said like it would be like seconds before you would lose consciousness. Yeah. Right. At most. Mm-hmm. And like you wouldn't even understand what was happening. Yeah. 
like if even that yeah exactly you blink out yeah. yeah if even that because i'm sure it popped up from behind yeah after slaughtering carlos she immediately went back on the trail did she like get him that quietly like she just like picked him off of the edge of the group um, or or were they he separate? was like trailing behind oh, okay 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 I think I think Carlos like genuinely was like not chill because mm-hmm. he was also the youngest. OK, like he was 16 and oh. his friends were brothers who were 19 and 23. So I think he was like probably just happy to be invited oh. out with that does the make older me feel boys. Sad. Yeah, and then they like torture a tiger in front of him. He's like, oh, I don't know if I, how I feel about yeah. these guys. And then he gets attacked. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. I was also imagining an entire group of like 12 and 13 year olds. So now I know that a couple of them yeah. were adults and yeah. I feel no sympathy. Yeah. And should definitely have yeah. known better. The next to be yeah. targeted were the brothers, 19 year old Amri Dhaliwal and 23 year old Kubir. Tatiana honed in on them immediately and they saw her or they saw people screaming <laughs> and their dead friend. Oh, my God. So Mm. they flee to try and get into one of those like little zoo cafes that they have. They do not make it. Mm -hmm. Tatiana tears apart Emery Paul first and then turns on Coolbeer. And she may have succeeded in killing him. But at this point, the police are there and their arrival distracts her from digging into him further like from actually like finishing it okay <laughs> let her cook <laughs> <laughs> she looks up from cool beer like covered in like all of their blood but giving them a like clean headshot they open fire and she drops right there on yeah. top of him Oof. yeah the brothers were hospitalized for extensive injuries, but both of them ended up living. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. They lived and the, the kid, the one kid the, who did the 16 year old. Yeah. yeah. That sucks. <sighs> Fuck them. Those are the tigers. Well, I, I stand the tigers. Like, I know. Yeah. It's not that the tigers did nothing wrong. Like vengeance is not the way, but also like, I don't feel too mad at them. Yeah. It's like, who are you I the mean, punisher? They... Yeah. <laughs> Tiger punisher. Little punisher logo that you see on the back of cop cars, but like a cat. Oh no. <laughs> like a cat not, skull. This thin, not this thin blue line the, tiger. The, the thin the orange thin line. Stripe. <laughs> the thin orange line. Oh no! It's just like a, 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 it's like a tiger, but it's in the the black and white with like, yeah. the blue stripes. <laughs> okay. Oh no! I hate it. I hate it. But yeah, like I mean, they're they're ultimately wild animals whose lands we have encroached on. We're the ones poaching them. We're the reason they're fucking endangered. Like I can't really feel that bad. Yeah, that they when kind of pushed into a corner or what they felt was a corner or an encroachment of their, you know, their autonomy, you know, whether it was stealing a boar that you shouldn't have done or, yeah. you know, being having yeah. a bunch of shit thrown at you by a bunch of punk kids. Yeah. He was also a poacher. Like, yeah. And that guy was a poacher, too. So, like, you know. Yeah. Like, for all we know, he like shot this tiger's like white. Right. Like, three like it could have killed its babies <laughs> or something. And this tiger was like, finally, this is my chance. Yeah. He laid that boar out. <laughs> uh yeah maybe don't throw rocks at anything as well like maybe we yeah, just don't do yeah that. especially something like that i know it's like, like cute and biblical to like try and stone someone but like we shouldn't, we shouldn't. get stoned kids don't yes, stone get stoned don't stone yeah like jesus yeah. said let he who lives in a glass zoo enclosure throw the first stone and looking around, I think that's none of us. I think that yes. was his point, is that none of us live in a glass zoo enclosure. I think yeah. that was his point, that this doesn't make sense. <laughs> he was yeah. a little silly, but he was very right. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Respect the Dead. You can follow Respect the Dead on Instagram and Twitter at underscore Respect the Dead. 
If you want to follow us individually, you can find our socials in the show notes. And you should check out our YouTube channels. We don't shit on dead people there as often, but still, we're making tons of cool stuff. If you enjoyed Respect the Dead and would like to support us, there's a couple of ways to do that. You can give us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you found us. If you leave us a review, we can read it out on the podcast. Reviews are the best way for new listeners to discover the show. Give us at least five stars and then share us with a good friend who likes venting about dead people. You can also give us some money over on our Patreon. Patreon supporters get some cool bonus content like bloopers from the cutting room floor and even coming up with a fake sponsor ad that we'll read in an episode. It has to be a fake business though, not your MLM, honey. Thanks so much for listening. Join us every Monday for our next Worm Feast. I'm Kellen Conrad. I'm Ailey Mandy. And I'm Hoots. Bye. Bye. Bye.